In November 1941, the powerful Australian warship HMAS Sydney completely disappeared with her entire crew off the coast of Australia. She wasn't the first ship to go missing in that area either. In fact, she had become the latest victim of the German merchant raider Komoran, which had been plundering and sinking Allied ships for months. This is the peridical story of the converted cargo ship that terrorized the seas in World War II. As Germany secretly rearmed in the years leading up to the Second World War, they faced a problem. Namely, how to build a strong naval force without the world noticing. The great powers were so intent on naval buildup that agreements had to be made to prevent an arms race. But mere paper wasn't going to hold the great powers back for long. Britain, Japan, Italy, France and the United States all eyed each other up to see who'd be the first to break the fragile new rules. In this environment of suspicion, Germany couldn't hope to build up a substantial force of battleships and aircraft carriers like the other powers could, so they opted for a more clandestine approach. Instead of many surface warships, the German shipyards focused on constructing U-boats and commerce raiders. If you thought U-boats were sneaky, wait till you hear about commerce raiders. They were built like normal merchant ships and, before the war, were even registered as such. But when war broke out, their true purpose was revealed. Naval guns were fitted behind hidden panels on the ship's superstructure. Anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns were also attached to deck plates that could be raised using hydraulic lifts. Using flags from different countries, a well-trained Kriegsmarine crew could disguise the ship as a friendly or neutral freighter to close in on their target. Once their prey had no chance of escape, the raider dropped its disguise and revealed its deadly armaments. The Kormoran was one of these wolf in sheep's clothing ships. She left Germany in December 1940, armed with six 5.9 inch guns, two 37mm anti-tank guns, five anti-aircraft guns, and 24 torpedoes, which could be fired from tubes hidden under the waterline. She was commanded by Corvetten Capitan Detmers, who, as we'll soon find out, was something of a gentleman pirate. Detmers' mission was simple. Cause trouble in the Atlantic, cause trouble in the Indian Ocean, then lay some mines around Australia or India. These orders were so vague that the crew pretty much had a free pass to do anything they wanted as long as it involved annoying the enemy. First things first, the ship was disguised as the Soviet freighter Vyacheslav Molotov, complete with an authentic Soviet flag. Hiding in plain sight, Komoran passed through the British blockade into the Atlantic without incident. Three weeks later, on January 13, 1941, Komoran located her first target, the Greek merchant ship Antonis. The Greeks were caught unawares, and before they knew it, German raiders were aboard. The ship was carrying coal from Britain and a few machine guns. Having no use for coal, the raiders stole the weapons and scuttled the ship. The 29 crewmen were thrown in Komoran's brig unharmed. Only five days after that, Komoran spied a tanker on the horizon. They chased the ship, but their prey was fast and took evasive action. Detmers gave the order to fire and German shells set the tanker alight. As the unfortunate ship went down in flames, Detmers ordered the survivors to be rescued. Komoran pulled 34 British sailors and a pet monkey from the water. By the start of February, Komoran had captured and scuttled two more merchant ships, stopping to pick up survivors every time. Now with 174 prisoners on board, the brig was getting full and the cooks were probably working overtime. Detmers remedied this by rendezvousing with a German supply ship, where he offloaded 170 prisoners. Four Chinese sailors were hired to do the Komoran's laundry, and the Brits gave Detmers their monkey in thanks for their good treatment. Now with the monkey on his shoulder, Detmers set out into the South Atlantic in search of more plunder, and he found it. By the time Komoran entered the Indian Ocean, she had captured another 123 prisoners, 
stolen a piano, sunk three ships, and taken the 11,000 ton oil tanker Canada Light as a prize. Comoron had a good run in the Indian Ocean too, sinking three more ships, including two on the same day. Through the morning sea mist of June 26, Comoron spotted a target. The Yugoslav freighter Velibit had just left Bombay packed with supplies. After the ship failed to respond to radio signals and warning shots, Comoron unleashed her guns and crippled the vessel. After obliterating the ship, Detmers, in usual gentlemanly fashion, rescued all the survivors. Just hours later, another ship was spotted, the Australian freighter Mariba. Cormoran closed in and fired on the ship after she failed to respond to warnings. It took 30 seconds for the ship to surrender, whereupon Detmers plundered the cargo and took 48 Aussie prisoners. In the latter half of 1941, word of a mysterious radar wreaking havoc among Allied shipping was beginning to spread. Allied High Command knew they were losing merchant ships in the Indian Ocean and had even caught sight of Cormoran more than once, but every time, they were fooled by her disguise. Whilst raiding in the Southern Hemisphere, Komoran had flown the Japanese flag and had assumed the identity of Japanese freighters Sakitomaru and Kinkamaru. When Komoran neared Australia, she switched identities again, this time becoming Dutch freighter Strat Malaka. Disturbed by the mysterious disappearances of nearby freighters, Australian High Command organised warships to escort supply convoys wherever possible. One of the ships temporarily assigned to escort duty was the cruiser HMAS Sydney. Sydney was the pride of the Australian fleet, and her crew were hardened veterans of the Mediterranean campaign against the Italians. On November 17, 1941, Sydney passed off the freighter she was escorting to a British ship at the entrance of Sunda Strait. Sydney sailors gave the Brits a cheery wave and then set course for Fremantle, Western Australia. It was supposed to be a simple three-day trip, but once Sydney disappeared over the horizon, the Allies never saw her again. At 4pm on November 19th, a lookout on the Komoran sighted a ship on the horizon. Its mast was so large that Detmers thought it had to be a tall sailing ship from the old days, but as it rose into view, he realised it was a warship. Acting quickly, Detmers ordered Komoran steam toward the sun at top speed, but at this critical moment, one of his two engines broke down. Komoran's speed was massively reduced just as Sydney spotted her. Closing in to positively identify the vessel, Sydney signalled, you should hoist your signal letters. Luckily, Detmers had captured an allied codebook on one of his raids and knew Strat Malaka's code. Maintaining the disguise as a Dutch freighter, not the radar that had been terrorising the Indian Ocean, Detmers raised the signal. PKQI. The officers aboard Sydney weren't convinced and decided to investigate further. The Australian cruiser closed to just 1300 metres and steamed parallel to the Komoran. They then demanded the supposed Strat Malaka give her secret signal. When Detmaus saw this message, he knew the game was up. Komoran's entire crew had been ready to drop the disguise and fight at a moment's notice since the Sydney was first spotted, and now, they got their chance. The steel plates hiding Komoran's guns were dropped and the Kriegsmarine let loose with every single weapon they had. Four full salvos were fired before the surprised Sydney managed to shoot back. The first Australian barrage was aimed too high and mostly missed the Komoran, but the Germans had found their mark. The first four of Komoran's salvos destroyed Sydney's bridge, radio room and gun direction tower. The second four salvos hit the ammunition store and blew apart Sydney's front turrets. While the big guns fired, the Kriegsmarine blasted into Sydney's deck with anti-aircraft guns. Sydney turned to run but was hit by torpedoes and started taking on water. She fired a few shots from her aft guns, and these mostly missed the Komoran, but some did find their mark. Not built for taking damage, Sydney's shells tore into Komoran and immediately put her engines out of action and started a raging fire. Critically damaged, both ships limped away. Detmers watched Sydney crawl over the horizon, still burning brightly, and probably realised that Sydney's was the only crew he wouldn't get to rescue. 
The few shells that hit the Komohan had sealed her fate, and at 6.25pm, just two and a half hours after sighting Sydney, Detmers gave the order to set scuttling charges and abandoned ship. The crew piled into lifeboats and rowed away. They watched the fire as it eventually reached the ammunition store and Komohan exploded. Over the next few days, Komohan's lifeboats were found and 318 of the 400 Kriegsmachines were rescued, including three of the four Chinese laundrymen. It's unclear whether Detmer's monkey survived. Sydney, on the other hand, was lost along with all 645 of her crew. The only evidence of the sinking was an empty life raft found several months later. Her wreck remained undiscovered until 2008. Many in Australia refused to believe the pride of their fleet had been sunk by a German raider and came up with many fun conspiracy theories involving a secret Japanese submarine and Komohan massacring the survivors. These have all been proved false. Investigation of Sydney's wreck showed that, at such a close range, her armour was useless and the Kriegsmarine managed to destroy nearly everything important before Sydney fired back. A gentleman pirate at heart, Detmers took down a far bigger ship with nothing but the element of surprise. That was the intrepid story of the commerce raider Komohan and her reign of terror plundering cargo and capturing allied ships in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. But what do you think? Do you think Detmers broke the rules of war when he flew another country's flag? Why do you think Sydney got so close? And most importantly, does plundering cargo, capturing ships and having a pet monkey grant you pirate status? Let us know all that and more in the comment section below. And just before you click off to the next recommended video guys, make sure you check out our brand new channel called The Braved, where we go deeper into history to find some of the most badass individuals from all different eras, all in a high, high quality format. So if you enjoy this channel, I know you'll enjoy that one. And if you're more so into music, check out our Relax Jack channel, where we use a lot of the music posted there on this channel in the background of our videos. And if you just want to join us in our wider community, check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.